Hello and good afternoon, Miles here from uh, North Wales in the UK. It is early October 2022 and I've got a bit of a quiet day today so I thought I would go and do some uh, foraging in, in the woods here for, for nuts. Perfect time of year to do it. And I thought I'd make a little video about it so I can show you the sort of nuts that we have here and uh, how you can eat them should you want to. Okay, so nut number one, we're going to go with the hazelnut, which obviously comes from the hazel tree, or hazel brush if you're from North America. You can find this relative of the birch tree all over the temperate regions of the Northern Hemisphere, including very abundantly in North Wales where they are literally everywhere. We've had a pretty warm summer by UK standards, with a temperature exceeding 40 degrees Celsius at times. That's around 104 degrees Fahrenheit. That means plenty of yummy hazelnuts to collect. These are the leaves of the hazel tree. They're a little bit kind of furry feeling. Um, got a nice, nice big floppy leaves. Uh, apparently they get used a lot by outdoorsy people as a replacement for toilet paper. Can't say I've ever done that myself, but you know, if you're caught short, then uh, needs must and all that. Um, what you're actually looking for for hazelnuts are these things. These are the, uh, the nut clusters. They're called uh, husks. And these ones are growing. See, they're a little bit, um, a little bit green. These ones. You're looking for ones that are a bit more brown. Uh, see if we can find some on this tree somewhere. Here we go. There's, that one's quite good. Uh, this particular husk will have had two. No, oops, just come off my hand. And that's a good sign because that means they're ready. Um, there we go. There's a hazelnut. Just put that to one side. Let's find some other ones. Oh, there's a good good clump of uh, nuts there. If I put my hand around the husk and pull very gently the whole husk should just come off. Um, although you don't always need to do that you can leave the husk on the tree. So these are the, the hazelnuts. This is like a three husk cluster. Um, and you see the nuts just come out very very easily. If the nuts don't come out of the husk like literally with no effort at all um, then they're not ready. And you should leave them um, but these ones you literally you touch them and they come out which is exactly what you want uh, a slightly browned off uh, sort of color to them you literally touch them and they come out and that means they are ready for harvesting so I'm just gonna go and fill a container with these now so literally the husk just falls off in my fingers you know, a breath of wind would have it falling out the tree anyway yeah, nice, uh, nice hazelnut. Oh, these ones are spot on. When the nuts are ripe, you will literally find them all over the ground underneath uh, the tree as well. Um, so the wind has knocked these off. It's going to be a little bit... Um, wary the ones on the floor because if you know they've come down really quite recently like you've just had a lot of strong wind the night before um they're not gonna be old but they tend to rot very quickly on the ground and in insects get to them and other wildlife so have a you know quick checked it there got uh you know the shells intact and things and they, they don't feel at all rotten and these don't um and that one's a little bit a bit manky on the end so I'll leave that one for the squirrels. Some nice mushrooms growing here as well. I don't know enough about mushrooms to tell you whether they're edible or not. Uh, never bothered to learn because I don't like mushrooms. I use this metal stick with a hook on the end to reach the high one so I can just pull the branch down. These ones look perfect. Nice and brown. This is a particularly lovely cluster of uh, nuts. And they start to go brown because the tree basically cuts off the water supply to the husk when it's ready. Uh, so the whole thing starts to go brown and the husk falls off and the nuts fall out and and, uh, and so it goes on. Um, well that's, that's ideal if you see them looking um, nice and browny like this. Trying to avoid the temptation of pulling out the green ones because they're, they're not ready and they won't taste ready when you eat them. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, 
some nice ones in here. This is about two hours worth of nut picking from hazel trees. Not bad. The thing to do now is shell these nuts. This is a particular nutcracker I got off eBay. It's actually ideal if you've got a lot to do, but there's various other tools, even a pair of pliers will do it. When you crack open these hazelnuts, you'll find inside the actual edible part that's actually quite nice just as it is. You don't need to take it any further. But personally, I prefer to roast these. Best way to do it, spread it out on a baking tray. Put your oven on pretty high. Stick them in and leave them for about 10 or 15 minutes. Let's have a look. Yeah, these are ideal. Just a little bit brown. You can eat them like that, but what I like to do myself is put them onto a piece of kitchen towel like this, another piece of kitchen towel on top, and just rub them so the the outer layer, which is like a a papery thin, almost like really dry leaves, is like a the skin on the nut, which is edible and it's fine. You can eat them as they are, but personally, I prefer to uh, just try and brush as much of that off as possible. Eventually, this is what you end up with. Nice jar of yummy roasted hazelnuts. These taste pretty amazing. Well worth the effort. Nut number two, I'd like to talk about the beech nut. This here is a beech tree. It's got nice oval leaves, nice dark and shiny leaves. Quite distinctive to, to beech. And at this time of year you find these little fellas which are beech nut husks. So we can just uh, look at one of those. That's what they look like. Little fairy things. I'm going to collect some of these. Right, let's see what we got. Now these have only had about half an hour to dry. So although some of the inner husks are coming out, like in this one, generally they're all pretty closed up. So we do need to give it a little bit longer. Now Pussycat's quite interested. No, not for you Pussycat. I don't think you'd like these. A couple of hours later, they're all starting to open up quite nicely. Let's see how difficult it is to get them out. Yeah, well there we go. They're the inner husks. You should find two in each one. A bit fiddly to get out still. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's what the empty outer husk looks like. Let's try another one. Oh, that was a bit easier. There we go. Got a nice pile going now. These are not the nuts. The nuts are inside these. These are the inner husks. They're easy enough to open, just take one and use your nails. 
just to open that inner husk and the nuts inside. There you go. That is a beech nut. It's worth bearing in mind a lot of these inner husks actually might not have any nuts in at all. It varies tree by tree. Some trees you'll find a nut in, in practically every inner husk. Some trees the other way around. Tend to find most trees around here. Um, about a quarter of them don't have nuts in. But you don't need to open them to find out. You can just squash the, the inner husk in your finger. It's, it's obvious if it's empty. There we go, another one. And that's what you end up with, a pile of beech nuts. You can eat them as they are, but most people prefer to roast them for a couple of minutes. If you eat them without roasting them, they're very soft and don't really taste of very much at all. For nut number three, I'd like to talk about the sweet chestnut. Here are some sweet chestnuts on a sweet chestnut tree. See the leaves are quite long and waxy. Uh, these ones are pretty small actually. Uh, that have come down really looking for bigger ones than this and ones that already have a few splits in to show the nuts are starting to burst out. So once you've peeled your sweet chestnut husk this is what you get. Uh, a nice brown nut. If it's not brown yet uh, then it's not ready. Um, they're, they're white while they're growing and then they become brown uh, when they're ready to uh, ready to come out. So your husk will come apart quite easily if it's ready as well, it'll be all split. Um, if it's still growing then it's quite tight and it's difficult to get them out. But this is what you end up with if, uh, if they're ready. I just want to show you this uh, as well. This looks very, very similar. This is a horse chestnut, also called a conker. It's the kind of thing people used to, uh, probably still do in some parts, used to put the end of a string and swing at other kids' conkers to have a conker fight to see whose would last the longest. Um, but its proper name is a horse chestnut. It's a sweet chestnut, horse chestnut. You can't eat horse chestnuts. I don't know why they're called horse chestnuts, because horses can't eat them either. They are definitely not edible. Um, they're actually poisonous, so don't eat those ones. It's the sweet chestnut. They're a very different nut, very different tree, completely different species. They just happen to look very similar and have a similar name. But you can tell the difference because the sweet chestnut uh, is stripy for one thing. It's got these uh, nice um, woody coloured sort of stripes from front to back, uh, which the uh, horse chestnut definitely does not. And also you get a little tail on the back of a a, a sweet chestnut. I don't know what that's all about, I don't know what it does, but they do have this little um, spiky tail on the end. And they tend to be flatter as well, they look a bit flatter than the um, the more rounded horse chestnut. You can see they are they are different. Um, definitely no tail on the horse chestnut, so that's the, the obvious one. Um, so this is the one that you want to be uh, you want to be eating, but not just like this of course, you do need to prepare them, so I'm going to talk about that now. So you take your sweet chestnuts, and what you want to do is using a sharp knife, you want to cut like a cross shape in the top of it, so it looks a bit like a jacket potato or a hot cross bun. It's quite tricky to do, you want to just go through the outer shell, um, but try not to damage the, the inner nut. You're doing this because it's going to expand or the nut will inside the shell. Uh, you don't want it to explode so it needs to be able to open up uh, when you cook them. When you've done all them, brilliant, what you're going to do is gather them up and you're going to put them into a bowl and then you're going to add some hot water, boiling hot water. This is going to soften them up for when you roast them. Give it about 10 minutes. When they're done, chuck them onto a baking tray and spread them out, but make sure the crosses are pointing upwards. And you're going to stick them in the oven at about 200 degrees Celsius and you're going to leave them for about 20 minutes. 
but keep an eye on them until they're just right. Let's have a look. Yeah, these are just right. See, they're just starting to, uh, kind of just starting to go crispy, but they're not burnt. And these are going to be nicely roasted all the way through. All you need to do is take the shell off like this. It should come off really easily if they're properly roasted. And there we are, the finished item. That is a sweet chestnut and it's absolutely gorgeous. Very yummy indeed.